Welcome back. It is the final day. I have 14 hours and 16 minutes to put in today. It is currently 12.09. Gonna head down to Villa and put in the final session. And then we're gonna discuss all of the stats, the hourly rate, the money won or lost, all the sessions. And then I also recorded how many times I got aces, kings, sets, etc. So it's been really fun in the end. Stick around and I'll see you guys in the hands. The final session of the 100 hour week. Stick around to the end. I will be going over all the numbers. On uh, this first hand, the button straddle is live. Big blind is completed. And I look down at 6 5 suited in early position. Uh, especially the button straddle. This is non open. So I go ahead and raise it to 25. And the button, as well as the big blind, make the call. So we're three ways to a flop of queen, jack, deuce, one diamond. Board's better for me, and as well, I've got some backdoor straight, backdoor flush possibilities, so I do go ahead and bet 25. Button calls, big blind, folds. Off to a turn, which is the king of spades. Not a great card. A lot of my hands are going to want to check here, so I'm probably just going to give up with my specific hand. So I check, and he checks back. Off to a river, which is the three of clubs. Uh, I've pretty much got nut low now, so going to have to bluff here. I also am going to play some ace-queen maybe queen 10 this way so i do have some value it does make a little bit of sense i would probably bet around 75 dollars so i do that and button snaps us with ace king damn it uh we're gonna table change after this to a very gambling table so stick around okay you guys this is like noon right now and there's probably over ten thousand dollars on the table is one three game uh there's like four friends that are just battling uh, one of the hands, it was four-handed pre-flop for $15, so $60 pot. Flop came down, queen, seven, deuce, rainbow. Um, original raiser bet 160 His friend check raises to 400 And then he jams all in for 1000 And the other person calls, and it's king, queen versus queen, jack. Just top pair versus top pair per... 700 big blinds so this game is insane uh button is one of those players he has raised to 25 over a lot of limps we got ace king suit in the big blind up and up to 75 folds back to him uh he talks to me a little bit and then jams all in against this player we are never folding ace king ever i call and we go to a flop of jack 10 5 2 clubs looks great turn is even better it is a deuce of clubs River is the six of diamonds. I show, and we actually crack pocket kings. Oh, <laughs> ran into that one, but got very, 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 very lucky. Next hand, we have ace king again. Unsuited this time. The button straddle is on, and there's been three limps. So I bump this up to $35, and I go heads up with the same player as the last hand. We go to a flop of king, jack, seven, all hearts. Not great, but we do have top pair, top kicker. So when it checks to me, I am going to bet. Monotone boards, you bet small, so I bet 25. And he raises me right away to 75. Against this player, I don't believe him just yet, so I do toss in the call. We go to a turn, which is not great. It's a four of hearts. This time he checks. Nothing to do here but check back and try to get to showdown, so I do check it back. River is the seven of clubs. This time he fires out for 75. It's a really small bet. But there are just so few bluffs here. <clears throat> it's really hard for him to not to have a heart, especially after you check raise the flop. And then check back turn. Like, yeah, we are just going to have to give this one up, even though the price is amazing. So I do go ahead and fold. In this next hand, the, tw the under the gun player has blind raised to 20. Folds around to the cutoff, who makes it 55. And I have ace jack off on the button. Seems like a clear three bet, but you do have to take in the into account that these players aren't raising like normal ranges. They're not gonna have something like nine, eight suited here for a $55 raise, even though it's only three X, right? They're not gonna have King Jack off suit here. It's like, this is a pretty strong range, but we can apply quite a bit of pressure here and I don't mind turning my Ace Jack into a bluff. So I do go ahead and three bet. I can't go too large as he's only got a 450 stack and I don't wanna put in more than one fourth of it. So I actually only raise it up to 125 he is going to have to play this out of position in a pot that's going to be like 1.5 SPR anyways. So sizing doesn't matter too, too much. <clears throat> Cutoff does make the call. and We're off to a flop, which is quite nice. Ace, queen, three, two spades. We do flop um, top pair. 
And I'd imagine him to just jam all in with Ace-King here. So we're a little bit worried about Ace-Queen, but a little bit less so now that there is a Queen there. Yeah, um, we most likely have the best hand here. <clears throat> but it's tough to get called down by worse blocking so much. So when he checks it over, I like to have some uh, really strong hands that check back the flop. So I do go ahead and check it back. Turn is all right. It's the six of spades. So we do pick up a second nut flush draw. This time he bets, but very small. $60. A little bit less than one fifth pot, but a little bit more. Um, just gonna call here, keep his range wide. <clears throat> it could be doing this with tons of hands, like random queens, like a king queen suited or something. And we go to a river, which is the four of spades. We do make the second nuts, and now he checks it over. And yeah, we're just gonna have to jam all in here. We do have quite a few flushes here, so it's quite tough to find bluffs, but. Pocket Kings and Pocket Jacks are both going to bluff here, the ones that don't have a spade. And yeah, I don't really know what else could bluff this river. I don't know, maybe tens without a spade as well. So when he checks, I go ahead and jam all in. <clears throat> he thinks for a little while, thinks for quite a while actually, but does make the call. Uh, he says he had pocket tens with the ten of spades, so it makes sense for the river call. The turn lead was a little strange with his hand, but... Doesn't matter, we get paid on that one in a huge $20 straddle uh, pot. In this next hand, button straddle is live, and there's been four limps after that. I pick up ace queen off in the hijack, and I re-raise it up to $40 and get three callers. So we are four ways to a flop of ace, jack, seven, rainbow. About as good as it gets, so when it checks to me, I'm going to start with a small bet of 55. I do get one caller who's the player that we had the ace, king, versus kings all in pre. Off to a turn, which is the nine of diamonds. Board's getting quite connected here, and I think I have three options here. I could go for a big bet here and then check pretty much any, almost all rivers, unless they're like deuce of hearts. I like probably 60% of the deck here. I'm gonna have to check back on the river if I bet large. If I check back, I can probably get some value on the river, or I could go for a small bet on the turn and a small bet on most rivers as well. I like to go with the large bet size of 185. It's around 60% pot. And under the gun, doesn't think for too long and unfortunately does fold. Don't know about my decision there. I think all three options are pretty close though. This next hand, a under the gun player has bumped it up to 10. I have 9 8 suited in the low jack. Could re raise sometimes, could just flat, especially against the sizing. I choose to flat and we do invite one other player in. So we're three ways to a flop. It's pretty good again. 9-4 deuce, 1 spade, just hitting every flop today. Uh, under the gun, so big blind checks, under the gun now bets 15. Could raise, but I think calling's much better, so I do go ahead and call, and big blind folds. Off to a turn, which is pretty good. Pick up the backdoor flush draw with the jack of spades. My opponent keeps betting very small now for 25. I think raising is a little bit of an overplay with just a top pair weak kicker, so I do go ahead and call. And we get very good news on the river when it comes to seven of spades. Now we bet 45. And if I didn't have a flush here and I was just chasing like three, five, I would want to go all in here. These are three really, really weak bets. And I don't think they can stand up to much pressure. So if I was going to bluff here, I would choose an all in sizing, especially with a pop being, you know, 156. It's like a 2x over bet. But I just don't think he's got anything here that's. I just want to put him in a tough spot where he's forced to hero call. Could go for smaller sizing of like 150, but I don't know. I just choose to go all in. And he doesn't think for too long and unfortunately does fold. So unfortunately, that table broke and we're on to a new one now. Uh, middle position is raised up to 11. I've got King Jack suited on his direct left. Could three bet, could call. I, just, I decide to call this time. And we do go five ways to a flop. Comes down about as dry as it gets. Seven deuce, deuce, rainbow. We do have the backdoor flush draw. Uh, middle position now bets $25. I don't know, this is into five people. Pretty good chance one of us has a good hand here. So against this sizing, I am gonna throw in the bluff here and I think it could be a little bit credible. We can also barrel off on turn diamonds or if we pick up a king or jack, it's most likely going to be good. So I do raise up to 75, small blind folds. Uh, everyone else folds and middle position makes the call. So we're probably going to give up here. Turn is the four of hearts. Definitely given up on this turn, so I just check it back. River, though, it's the king of hearts. 
Uh, he checks it back to me, and now I think he's got a hand between probably like 10s and 8s, something like that. So I'm going to go for some value here. I size up to about 130, about 60%. Thanks for a little bit, and tosses in the call. We show, and it is no good against the ace-king. Bad bluff. On to the next hand. We have an early position raise to 15. I've got pocket queens in the hijack. I bump it up to 45, and only the original raiser calls. So heads up to a okay flop of 10-8-8 rainbow. It's a flop that she's probably not going to hit too often. So when she does check, I go ahead and bet small $30, and she makes the call. Off to a turn, which is the jack of clubs. Now pocket jacks beat us, which is a little bit unfortunate. But it also introduces a few hands like jack-10 that think they're good, or ace-jack that caught up. But when she checks, I'm going to size up. She's got about like 2 SPR behind, so you want to bet about 60% pot here. But I do go ahead and bet 100, and we get jammed on. Uh, we can't really fold. It's not a great spot either. But a lot of these live players will just have a hand they want to go with, and they'll if they're out of position on the turn, they will just go with it. Right? You're going to bet they're going to jam on you, even though it's going to fold out all your bluffs. So when we do have value, we do have to call. I toss in the call. We, hear, we see some good news on the river with the queen of spades. We do make the nuts save for quads. Um, I just tell her I hit the river. She says it's good. So I don't know what she had, but we were probably good the whole way. Okay, we have two limps, and I have seven six of clubs on the button. I raise it up to 18 before the first limper. Limp raises it up to 55. Pulls back to me, and I know that this player isn't just doing this with aces and kings and queens. Like, they could actually have, like, pocket fours here or five four suited, something like that. So, against him, I will make the call. It's a decent price, and we're in position and a little bit deep. And we get an amazing flop of jack, five, four, two clubs. We flop the open-ended straight flush draw. Even better news, my opponent just bets pot. $100 right into the middle. Nothing to do here but jam. Even if he has aces or pocket jacks, we're still, still got tons of equity. And folding out ace high with seven high is not a bad um, spot to be in. Plus, if we just call this pot's 300, he's going to jam on the turn for 200. It makes it pretty tough to call. I think the math is pretty close, but yeah, nothing to do here. I jam it in, and he goes in the tank. Good news, he's probably just got ace high, and we're probably going to get this one through. Sure enough, he does fold it. So, pretty big pot. We won like 160 bucks there for the seven high. Okay, this next hand has a little bit of an interesting dynamic. Uh, middle position, I really want to play pots with her. She just does not fold. Uh, but she's limped, button is raised 20. I'm going to make a pretty speculative call with 7 6 suited out of position, and middle position also calls. Off to a flop of eight, five, deuce, one diamond. So we do have the open ender as well as a backdoor flush draw. I check it. So does middle, or sorry, middle position now leads for 20. Button fold, which is good news. And against this player, it seems very tempting to raise here. But she doesn't fold. So our only option here is to call. So I do call and we see a beautiful turn. Four of diamonds. We also pick up a flush draw as well as our open ender. The flush draw doesn't matter, obviously. Uh, I check it, and she once again bets 20. I'm going to raise, and I'm going to make it pretty big so I can size up for the river shove. I re-raise to 80, and she calls. Off to a river, which is the nine of spades. Doesn't change anything. I go all in. Doesn't think for too long, and calls it off. I show it's good against pocket kings. Yeah, pocket kings. Uh, limp called pre-flop, donk the flop, and then... Got stacked so yeah another big pot going our way <clears throat> all right this is the final hand um we get pocket queens in the big blind looks like we're about to chop it but button goes ahead and limps nice small blind also completes i bump it up to 18 button calls and small blind folds got a pretty cool flop of queen jack deuce two spades so we've got top set on a pretty draw heavy board um i think i should have bet here but i did go ahead and check like SPR is quite low. We could still get stacks in. I want to give him a chance to bluff because this player does like to bluff quite a bit. And, you know, any hand like 8-7 is just going to fold. So I check it over. Unfortunately, he does check it back. We see a pretty good turn. We turn quads. Nice. Um, check it over to him. And I'm just praying he has ace-kings of spades or 8-9 of spades because that would be like a $150,000 bonus to me. But unfortunately, he checks it back as well. 
I see a pretty brutal river and the nine of spades. Yeah, I've got quads and I've got the fourth nuts. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm still going to go for some tiny value. I bet 15 and I'm probably I'm thinking about folding to a raise, but I probably can't just on the off chance that he does have ace king of spades. So I bet 15. He calls. I show and it is good. <laughs> Pretty weird spot with quads there. That is it. That is day seven. We are all done. It is 2.24. I think it's just over 100 hours. I could use a massage, a ton of sleep, a few drinks. I've got so many chores and responsibilities that piled up over the seven days, but thank you so much for watching me be a degen for a week now. Uh, the results from today were really really good i ran super hot very happy to finish this off on a high note definitely exceeded 30 dollars an hour i'm so excited to go over these results tomorrow with you guys but for now i need some sleep i will see you all tomorrow thank you so much for watching this is the moment you've all been waiting for the final results of the 100 hour poker week before we get into that please like down below it means a lot to me it really helps the algorithm and comment below any other poker challenges you want to see me take on. That being said, let's get straight into it. I hit a grand total of 100 hours and two minutes over the course of the week, with the shortest day being around 13 hours and 30 minutes, and the longest being around 15 hours, 30 minutes, with the average being about 14 hours, 15-ish. Like 14 hours, 15 minutes. Uh, this resulted in about 85 hours and 11 minutes of actual poker played. I didn't take too many breaks and I sat at the table when I ate. Just absolutely degenerate. Um, <laughs> uh, the shortest day was 10 hours of poker and the longest was 13 hours and 2 minutes. This is like 2,125 hands of live poker across the 7 days. I actually got a blister right there on my thumb. I don't think you can see it. But where I peel the cards a lot, yeah, I got a blister there. Mom, uh, hands dealt. I got ace king off suit 27 times. Ace king suited four. Jacks 12. Queens and kings both 10 times each. And finally, aces only six times. Uh, for the big hands, I hit one straight flush. Twice I hit quads. Almost hit it three times, but I folded to a big three bet pre flop. And I hit 29 sets. Yeah, <laughs> 29. The average for this, roughly 21, 25 hands played, should be around 15 to 20 or so. So almost doubled it. Love sets. Um, how many times did I stack others or get stacked? Um, I'm just going to refer to stacked as one of the players, either me or my opponent, was all in. And one of us either lost or won over 100 big blinds. So, we got stacked a total of three times across the seven days, and we stacked our opponents a total of 12 times. It's four times more. Pretty good. Uh, we played three pots over the $1,000 mark, and I actually won all three of them. Nice. Um, all three of them were actually just one pair of hands, too. I had ace-king on an ace-high board. I had king-jack on a jack-high board. And the other one was pocket-kings versus king-jack suited all in pre. So all one pair hands. It's pretty big pots for one pair. All right, and now for the money totals. Day one. In for $1,200. Out for $2,043 for a win of $843. Day two. In for $600. Out for 359 for a loss of 241. Day three, I was in for 1400. Out for 940 for a loss of 460. Wasn't looking good. We're at day three, only up 140 dollars. <laughs> but day four, we started to turn things around. In for 600. Out for 1782 for a win of 1182. And in day five, there were three sessions across the day. I started off at 13 at Hard Rock. I was in for 900. Out for 848 for a loss of 52. Jumped into the 2 5 game and I was in for 1048. Out for $2,037 for a win of 989. And then I finished up at Villa playing 1 3. I was in for 600. Out for 832 for a win of 232. Uh, day 6. 
In for 800, out for 1178 for a win of 378. And finally, day seven, the biggest win of the week on a Tuesday. I was in for 700, out for $2,073 for a win of 1,373. The grand total for the seven days of poker I played was a win of $4,244. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big win. This makes for an hourly rate of about $49.81. Or if you want to go big blinds per 100, this is a whopping 67 big blinds per 100 hands played. Meaning every hand dealt to me, I pretty much earned, not earned, won $2. Even though I folded, just every single time a shuffle went, it's $2. Uh, yeah, this is going to bring the bankroll from 4000 $956 to a whopping 9200 It's the highest the poker bankroll has been during this challenge, and we're getting really close to the five-figure mark. I really hope you guys enjoyed this all. Thank you so much for watching. I really thoroughly enjoy all the support. Uh, this whole video was, the playing was just an absolute grind to get through. My lower back felt like dog shit. <laughs> Um, but I really enjoy putting these videos together. I love this thing and love reading your replies. So leave some more comments down below. I love, uh, reading them. I reply to most of them. Sincerely, thank you all. And I hope to see you guys all at the tables. If not, I will see you in the next video. Thank you once again so much for watching. Goodbye.